Welcome to the cerebellum. Cerebellum is seriously a fun topic and one that is of absolutely uh, integral importance to us. So let's remind ourselves as to what the cerebellum of the adult looks like. Here it is. But uh, th there are two important things to, to look at or to consider about the structure. First of all, this is about 10% of the adult volume. So about 10% of the, of the contents of the cranium is the cerebellum. Um, and despite that, it contains 50%, half of all the neurons. Okay, half of all the neurons, approximately 40 some uh, billion, are of one type, granule cells. We'll see that. But half of them are contained in this, uh, in this area. And it, this is extremely, this is an extremely packed, dense uh, structure. Okay. So we've left the motor hierarchy, and we just spent quite a few uh, lecture series on, on aspects of the motor hierarchy, and now we're out of it. In fact, if you just took a look at the connectivity of the cerebellum, you would think, oh, well, that's part of the somatosensory system. It's, it's somehow involved in somatosensory perception. And why would you have that impression? Because the bulk of the input going to the uh, cerebellum is sensory in nature. Yeah, a lot of it comes from the spinal cord and the brain stem. A some of it comes from, from the cortex as well. A lot of it comes from the cortex and the human as well. Um, but it's sensory in nature. And yet, when you, w in adults who have damage, who sustain damage to their cere cerebellum, the dominant, the dramatic symptom that is observed is ataxia, as you know, and that is a quintessentially motor problem. That is the, the uh, inability to correctly coordinate a smooth movement on the first time out. So, for example, not being able to touch a finger, but instead under and overshooting it. Not having the correct metrics of the, of the uh, movement needed. So, we, we classify the cerebellum, I think correctly, as part of the motor system. And yet, it, it doesn't contact motor neurons, and um, it has no direct contact out to the muscles. So how does the, let's go to the board to see how this works. What we've talked about in the past, uh, in the past few lectures, it, uh, is the hierarchy, and that's shown in black. Cortex, brainstem, both project into the spinal cord, to motor neurons, and to inner neurons, which in, and the motor neurons in turn control the muscles. That's the hierarchy. There's only conversation going down. The bosses are telling the underlings what to do, and that's it. There's no talking back. The talking back, uh, the first sign of talking back that we get is, uh, or a sign, a major sign of talking back that we get is using the cerebellum, where information comes back into the cerebellum from the, from the muscles, from the periphery, via both the spinal cord and the brain stem. And that reaches the cerebellum which then talks back not to those motor neurons and not to the spinal cord or the brainstem to the, to the uh, interneurons even. It talks back to the motor control centers that are in the cortex and the brainstem. So the cerebellum is not part of the hierarchy. It is a quintessentially modulatory structure. And when, it, when we lose the cerebellum, what we're losing is modulation, motor modulation. And that should, I hope, convey to you the uh, incredible importance of modulation, the strength of modulation. Uh, modulation is not, a, is, not a, um, is not a subtle effect. It's a major effect, okay? So the modulation, without modulation, movement is not what, we, um, w what we're used to. So let's, um, let's highlight a few other features of cerebellar function. Uh, as I, as I alluded to, it's got a lot of neurons. Not only does it have a lot of neurons, but most of those neurons are born after birth in the human. So the, um, the, the whole cerebellum is not set up. In fact, it gets set up throughout childhood. And it's not a hardwired system. It's a system that is set up, um, it, that is wired by experience. So it's a very plastic system. And why would that be? Because 
it is adaptable. It's adaptable to whatever body you have at this moment and at the next moment and at the fo following moment. So it can change as circumstances and as the body grows and develops and as circumstances change. The cerebellum can al alter your, um, uh, your motor outflow. It is, I think, best uh, thought of as the conductor. And the conductor has a couple of roles. The conductor first rehearses with the, with the uh, orchestra and makes sure that things are, are working. It basically uh, facilitates the learning of a piece, the learning to coordinate between sections of the orchestra to play a piece. And in the same way, the cerebellum is uh, critical to motor learning learning how to make movements. Some of those movements are movements that we all make, walking and talking, and some of those movements are movements that only some of us decide to learn, juggling and moonwalking. What, regardless of which type it is, it's the cerebellum that's gonna organize that learning. And then it's gonna be the cerebellum that is going to, just as the conductor, when the performance comes, the conductor ensures that the orchestra plays the piece as uh, a, a, in a coordinated fashion. The cerebellum is going to ensure that the movement is made in a coordinated fashion. If there's, if there's an error in the movement, that error will be connect, corrected, not in the same iteration of the movement, but in future ones. So this, the, the, the final piece about the cerebellum is that it is a feed-forward system. It is feeding forward its modulation. It can't do anything about what has happened in the past, and it certainly, it certainly can't do anything about what's happened in the past. It also can't do anything about this particular iteration. But it can learn from this iteration to make the next step better and the following step even better. And by the third step, you're good to go. You stepped off the sidewalk, you're in the sand, and by that third step, you've got sand walking uh, in, in uh, full force, and you've left concrete walking behind you. In the next video, we're gonna look at cerebellar topography.